I'm Darren Kitchen, this is Land Turtle Basics, and today we're gonna to be talking about the turtle shell and turtle modules. So we're picking up from where we left off in the previous episode where we went ahead and updated to the latest version of the software. So let's get back to our Windows host and continue the process. So here we are, and we have this leftover from our previous session. It says in PuTTY it is inactive. I can right click here and restart the session. And I'm going to receive this alert again, the reason being the key fingerprint has changed, and that is because it's a very new version of the software. So we say yes, add that to the key ring. I'm going to log in as before as root, and the default password sh3llz because it has been changed after the reflash. And of, of course, again, prompted for a new password. So at this point, here we are. This right here is the turtle shell. You can navigate it with arrow keys with enter to go into a menu, with escape to go back. You can also, if you'd like, in PuTTY at least, you can go ahead and click. And I can say, you know, click, change IP, change a uh, WAN MAC address and hit select. And I can do that and I can choose a random MAC address if I want or I can click cancel and click back. Uh, likewise with the keyboard. So what I want to get you familiar with though, this what, right here is what we call the turtle shell. If I quit this shell, you'll notice this is just your in a embedded Linux device and I can go ahead and, you know, um, ls tech la slash and hooray. From this banner though, you can see, it says enter turtle to return to the shell. So anytime I'm going to clear this, I can it just write turtle and there I am back in the shell. So at this point, let's go ahead and get ourselves some modules because they are the ones that do the heavy lifting on the turtle. Now, by default, there's only one module in the latest version, and that is module manager. And there's a reason for that because I want you to always have the latest versions of the modules and because this is uh, pretty awesome in that there's a lot of community development here. There's these open source turtle modules. There's a very simple API. Later on, we'll get into actually writing our own very simple but uh, for right now consider this kind of an app store where all of the modules are free and it just goes ahead and downloads them from landturtle.com let's take a look I'm gonna go into module manager it's the only one selected and so I'll press return to hit select and every module can be started and stopped enabled disabled and configured so for right here there's nothing to do starting or enabling it let's go ahead and configure the module manager and here I get the option to get the directory from landturtle.com I can delete modules that I currently have I can update the ones that are already installed or I can go back so from the directory it will ask me are you sure because I do uh, this is going to make a connection to landturtle.com so you know if I've gone ahead and deployed this at a client site and I'm trying to be covert this may not be something that I want to do otherwise if you're setting this up in your own lab then feel free so I'll go ahead and choose yes And here I am presented with the list of available modules. Now I'm going to go ahead and just check all of these. Use the spacebar to put a checkbox next to them. This should be very familiar to anybody who's installed a Linux distro with Anaconda. And we're going to go ahead and tab over to OK. And this will download and install all of the modules that I've selected. Let me know that they installed. And now if I go back and I go back again, you'll notice that I have many more modules. All of these modules available for me. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and understand a few basics about these modules. I said that they can be started, stopped, or configured, enabled, and disabled. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at, say, Netcat Reverse Shell. This is a very simple module. All it does is creates a reverse shell using Netcat. It's a staple of TCP IP. It's a Swiss Army knife. It's a really wonderful thing. I'm going to walk you through the process of uh, configuring it, starting it, stopping it, and enabling it. So let's go ahead and configure here. And the configuration for each module is going to be different. It's going to depend on what the module actually does. In this case, this creates a persistent reverse shell uh, that provides us access to uh, slash bin slash sh or, or our, our bash prompt, if you will. And that means that we'll be able to have access to our turtle shell from anywhere, which is really cool. Uh, in this case, the only two parameters that it wants is a host and a port. Now, with many of these configurations, there will also be a help option, and we can get some useful stuff here, like 
hey, here's a command that you could run on you know, another machine with Netcat as a listener where you could go ahead and receive that connection. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. I have uh, this Linux box set up. Let me increase that font size just a little bit for you. And I'm going to, let's see, find out my IP address first. It is 1073.31.244. So I'll go ahead and copy that and clear the screen. And I'm going to run netcat, tac L for listen, tac V for verbose, tac P for the port, and I'll choose 8080. So now that's listening on port 8080. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to set my host to 1073.31.244 and the port to 8080. Yes, these are on the same LAN, so this will work uh, perfectly. And when I go ahead and choose start, this is actually going to go ahead and start this particular Netcast Reverse Shell module using the settings that are provided under Configure. And it says starting the Reverse Shell, I can hit OK, and I can go back. Now when I do this, you'll notice that right here I have an X next to Netcat Reverse Shell, and that means that it is running. I can tell that by going here and I see, hey, I received a connection. And if you're familiar with Netcat reverse shells, this means that similar to how we just did before, if I do an ls, tac la slash, I go ahead and receive the output as I would expect. I can do cat slash etsy slash banner. And I am, there you see it, on my land turtle. So from here, let's go ahead and stop our module. As you might imagine, we select it and then we just press stop. And over here, we can see that the connection has been disconnected. There we are. So what is enabling? Well, quite simply, it just means start this module every time the LAN turtle starts. Well, every time it boots up, every time we plug it in. So I'll go ahead and hit enable. And you can see now the status is stopped. So if I go back, I'll see that I do not have a check mark next to it. But if I take a look at it, it says boot up status is enabled. So this means that as long as I have a Netcat listener, say up in the cloud somewhere, and I drop this on a LAN, it's going to go ahead and establish that Netcat connection. So there you are, uh, very simple. All, all that modules can do are you can configure them, you can start and stop them, you can enable them, and likewise, if I don't want this to happen every time uh, I boot up my LAN turtle, I can go ahead here and say disable. Now, of course, we can even quit the turtle shell by hitting the escape key a few times or pressing back. I can come down here and hit a exit. And I want to show you something real quick, which is if I ls tech la slash etsy slash config slash modules, I'm sorry, slash etsy slash turtle slash modules, you'll notice there are all of the modules. So likewise, if I would, uh, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and set up my listener again, and I can run slash etsy slash turtle slash modules slash netcat reverse shell start. And there we are, I'm started, and I'm on my land turtle. Likewise, I can do that again, but with stop. And to make things easier, there are also shortcuts, if I restart that, for start, netcat rev shell and stop netcat rev shell. So those are land turtle modules. We're going to get more into those later on, but suffice it to say they can be downloaded from the module manager, they can be configured, they can start and stop, and they can of course enable and disable. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you at landturtle.com.